This is an extremely exciting day here at Charge Psych Works because one of the first EBMX X9000 version 3 controllers has arrived. I get to open it up and show you guys what this new controller is all about. Let's go ahead and dive into this controller, get it opened up here. First things first, like every EBMX controller, it comes with a card on the front. You do not want to lose this card. It has got a ton of valuable information on it for you to refer to. It's a good place to go and download the app as well. Here's the first look at the controller itself. Woo. Oh man, that thing's pretty. I gotta say the overall quality of that controller just looks phenomenal out of these guys. Let's go ahead and keep on diving into this box, seeing what all comes in it here. So you've got a new colored display for this bike. We will go in more depth when it comes to this display here soon. This is a brand new display that is specific to the EBMX version three controller. Comes with the Bluetooth dongle. This is very necessary for utilizing the app and tuning your bike. It comes with a thumb throttle. This thumb throttle can be used for multiple different things. It can be a clutch, it can be an actual throttle, it can be a regen. All depends on what you want to utilize it for. I actually typically utilize it as a clutch, but to each their own on that, I know a lot of people love using this for regen. And we have got the EBMX X9000 version 3 two to one cable. This is a different two to one cable from the previous version. This is where you will plug your display as well as your thumb throttle into. And this end will come into the wiring harness that is necessary for your specific bike. Last thing you'll find in the package is a bunch of bolts. These bolts are for installing the motor wires as well as the positive and negative leads for the battery. Be sure to use the bolts that come with the kit for doing this. So right off the bat, you can definitely tell that EBMX put some time and care into the quality of this controller. I think that's their number one thing is they're trying to produce a very reliable, sustainable, and just overall peak performing controller in comparison to all the others on the market. That is their goal. They want to be the premium. They're working really hard to make that happen. And I think looking at this overall, it definitely gives you that feeling when you open that box. Now, something nice about this controller is on the front side of it, it looks very similar to the version two, which is a very good looking controller, but that also means that the version two heat sink works on this controller. Currently in America, they're only gonna come in black. So when you order one, if you want it to be a different color, you can just order a different colored heat sink and install it straight onto this controller like you would the version two. So that is very nice. Important to keep in mind that a version one heat sink does not fit the version two or version three controller. That is a different heat sink overall in comparison to this one. Because they stuck to the version two heat sink, that means that the liquid cooled version of the heat sink for those really gnarly guys is still compatible with this controller. Although I don't know that it's very necessary anymore because of what EBMX did to make this controller so much better with heat. This controller has got an operating temperature range of negative 13 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 176 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a lot of heat. But the really nice thing is that because of the internals that EBMX has updated in this controller, the heat efficiency has gone up a full 30% from the version two controller. That controller was already extremely efficient, extremely impressive. I've raced that controller a lot and really beat it up, but to have even more heat dispersion out of this controller, that is something really impressive. I think that you're gonna have a lot of peace of mind when it comes to the heat, especially to kilowatt performance that this controller brings. EBMX has rated this controller at 50 kilowatts. That is a huge rating. They have bench tested this thing all the way up to 60 kilowatts, which that's a massive number. They've done that safely, but they're rating it at 50 kilowatts. That is a very sustained pull 
of 50 kilowatts. It is impressive that they were able to pull that out of this controller. The version two controller was rated at 40 kilowatts to bump the version three all the way up to 50 kilowatts is extremely cool to see. And you can definitely tell why they have got 30 120 volt Infineon MOSFETs in this controller, which means you can put it through some extreme conditions. Those are some of, if not the best MOSFETs on the market, and they utilize those in this controller. Now, EBMX updated this controller to 120 volt capability because they know the market extremely well. They know the battery types, the cell types, these bikes that we are putting this controller onto, they know that the 120 volt range is probably the maximum that we're gonna see in many years to come for these smaller bikes. Even the Ceron Ultra B, you aren't gonna see a battery that goes above 120 volts that can fit into that chassis properly with current and upcoming battery technology. So they decided 120 volt is the best move, make that compatible and usable in this controller, and it's gonna go a long way. The kilowatt output is not the only thing that has gone up in specs on this controller. The phase current output has gone up quite dramatically. It can now do a thousand continuous phase amps and burst up to 1600. That is an insane amount of torque for how small these bikes are. Now EBMX has integrated a lot of really cool features into this controller and I'll take you through those in the app soon. But a really cool feature that they have integrated into this is called Wheel Lift Assist. Now you might have seen or heard of what's called wheelie mode. EBMX has taken a little bit of a different approach to this to create an assist to get you to a point that allows it to be functional in day-to-day -day riding. We will go into much more depth on their Wheel Lift Assist and even test it in a future video. But the gist of it is that this is going to control the pitch angle of your bike. It's easy to turn on and off. You can completely and fully customize and adjust it to what you want. And essentially that means that if you pop it up into a wheelie, the bike won't go past a certain degree. It'll basically back off the throttle and allow you to kind of assist in that wheel lift. So for me personally, in a day-to-day -day use, what I'll probably end up using it for is something like the whole shot. I would set a timer on this that would be some odd 10 seconds after I start, depending on the course. I would launch off the line with the clutch that this bike has, but set it at a degree angle to where I can just put the power to the ground and the bike won't let it come up from that, which means I will have traction all the way through a launch on the start. And that is something that I'm extremely excited to test. I love wheelies as much as the next guy, but when it comes to getting the perfect start that really sets you apart in a racing scenario, I think that's extremely cool. But this can be utilized in so many different ways, like climbing up a hill, set the degree angle for that hill, and then you can climb up it a lot easier, not loop out backwards. So many different use cases for this. Extremely excited to get into that when I get this on a bike and get testing it. So be sure to stay tuned for that video. Hit the subscribe button. That is something I'm really excited to test about this controller. So if you can see on the back of this controller here, there are two ports for plugs. Now on the previous controller, there were a lot of plugs coming out of the actual controller itself. Those plugs were quite long. They were used for a lot of different scenarios and cases, but EBMX really simplified things and made the structure of this so much better by just utilizing these plugs. They've done quite a few different things with their wiring harnesses to make it work great and seamlessly for installation on your bike. For example, here is the Teleria wiring harness for the MX3, MX4, and MX5. So this is all of the wiring that it takes to get this controller to work on your MX3, MX4, MX5, which is really impressive. You've got these two main plugs that just sleekly go into the back of the controller there. This will come up to the main wiring harness that comes on the bike itself. And then here you've got a couple of different ports. You've got one for that two to one cable and one for the Bluetooth of the bike. That is all the wiring it takes to get a bike like that going, which is really, really cool to see. It is so much better that it is that sleek to get this installed. That means you'll be way less likely to pinch and damage wiring while installing this controller, which is huge. That is really nice for longevity. And I think that's going to go a really long way for everybody on their bike. Now, with that being said, that means that all of the previous wiring for the V1 and V2 controllers are not compatible with the V3 controller. So if you're getting wiring for your bike, make sure that you've selected the correct wiring. That way, 
the installation goes smoothly because the other wires just will not work. You'll know a telltale sign is all of the new wires will have these two plugs on them and that is going to be the correct wire for the version 3 controller. It's important to make sure that you select the right kit for your bike because every bike is so unique to their own but EBMX has already created a ton of kits for a ton of different bikes on the market. They've got the E-Ride Pro 2.0, the 3.0, the SR even is ready for this controller to get installed. The Teleria MX3, MX4, MX5, Teleria Triple X, Reroad R1, Suron Ultra B, Suron Light B. All of the bikes that are very common to having a controller like this put onto them, EBMX is ready to go with that. So when these hit the market, which is going to happen very, very soon, you will be ready to get this installed onto your bike with that appropriate kit. Now, another really nice update that EBMX made to the wiring is this two to one cable has got more insulation inside of it. It has got thicker wires. It doesn't look much thicker, but it is definitely stronger than it was before. But a really big thing is they went away from the circular connector to a much more square shaped connector. So you can definitely tell it's just one way to plug it in. You won't get confused. You won't bend pins with that being the case. This is going to make installation a lot easier so that you don't mess it up by accidentally misaligning those pins, which was a really common issue that happened to a lot of different people just because of that connector shape. So this is definitely going to help prevent that and make installation also go a lot smoother for you in that case. Another thing to mention is that the V3 is compatible with the colored display that EBMX offers, the one that goes in the middle of your bars. However, you do need new wiring and you need to update the firmware on that. We will soon offer an already updated kit to just purchase so that you can utilize that on the V3 controller. Well, there you have it. That is an overview of the new version three controller. I think one of the most impressive things about this, aside from the massive bumps and specs, is that it is staying at the same exact price point as it was before. That's incredible. Thank you, EBMX, for doing that. Look forward to getting this installed on a bike. After I get it installed, I will show you guys the whole app. That is an awesome new app for this bike that deserves its own video. I will also be testing this here on our E-Ride Pro SR. I think that is gonna be a bike that this controller is gonna go a long way on. So stay tuned guys. I'm gonna get working on all of that. Hope to see you in the next video.